everybody. Exciting week. Uh, always the opportunity to go to South Bend and, and play Notre Dame and to be a part of this historic robbery. It's special for us as coaches, as players, and the university. Um, you know, playing a really good Notre Dame team. I think Coach Kelly's done a wonderful job with this group. Uh, you know, to be able to go to Athens, Georgia, and, and to be able to put on the show that they did there and almost come away with a huge win. You can see why they're a top 10, uh, ranked in the top 10. Offensively, very impressed with Ian Book and, and the job that he's doing with the skilled players around him. I think he's being a great field general for that team. Um, and then defensively, probably two of the more dynamic defensive ends that we'll face all year uh, in their crew. Um, they cause havoc in the backfield. And I think one of the, the biggest things for us will be protecting the quarterback. From an injury standpoint, I know you'll all ask me about the quarterback. Uh, you know, Keaton is medically cleared. Uh, he will start in this game. We're glad to have him back. Um, both kids, both Keaton and Matt, are preparing just like their starters, uh, that like they do every week. Um, but uh, Keaton will uh, start in this game. Talanoa uh, has been medically cleared also, so we anticipate him being a part of this game. He's getting reps uh, in practice right now and getting back in form. And uh, Elijah Griffin is uh, getting very close. Uh, practice both yesterday and today and is looking good. So as long as he continues to progress, uh, he's got an opportunity to help us on, on Saturday too. So with that, I'll take any questions that you have. Coach, what do you think of uh, Brian Kelly? You said that you are on the top wide receivers that they're going to play against all season. Um, it's a compliment. I, you know, I, I feel like uh, you know Pitt and Tyler and, and Amon Ra have done a wonderful job uh, this year, um, and it'll be it, it'll be a, a good defensive squad going up against a good offensive squad, especially in our skill positions right now. So, um, appreciate the compliment. Uh, I know those guys go out and give their best each and every week, and I know they'll do the same in South Bend. How difficult the circumstances are is it for Keith just being? Obviously, you sat out the last couple of weeks, a freshman stepping on the road against a defense like Notre Dame. Yeah, you, you know, one of the things I think he's got advantage of was we had that bye week, and even though he wasn't cleared for contact, he began throwing and began working with the receivers last week during the bye week, and, and that helps, you know, to gain part of those reps. Uh, and then, you know, being cleared and practicing yesterday today, he does not look out of form to me. He looks really good, um, and we'll continue through the week, um, you know, and, uh, you know, he, he – he came out today, I thought was very decisive with his decision making, looked very good. So hopefully that continues and he carries it to South Bend. Is Marquis step ready for an expanded role? Uh, you know what, I, you've seen Adam him grow each and every game. I think his number of touches have grown in each and every game. And we'll see where that goes this game, not to give away game plan. But, sure. uh, but he, he, he has grown, uh, and you hope that. You know, with a redshirt freshman uh, that uh, is now going, garnering in his second year, that his, his role continues to expand. Uh, we're just we're really fortunate that he's coming on right now. You know, Vavai being a, a, a little bit dinged, uh, you know, a little bit injured with, with a knee. Uh, it's, it's being able to take some reps off of him. And obviously, Stephen is still the home run hitter that, he, that he's been. So um, I do see Keese getting uh, some more reps and some more opportunities. And he's doing a nice job. Beyond just the running aspect of it, how do you feel about him in the other areas of the game? Uh, he's growing. He's, he's getting better. You know, he's learning pass protection. I think he's really taking a step forward there. Um, he, he is um, learning how to try to be a natural ball catcher out of the backfield. Um, it, it's something that he's worked extremely hard on. You know, he reminds me a lot of Rojo when he first got here that it wasn't easy for him. Uh, but he got better and better and better and then became natural at it. And Keith will too. Keith will too. Um, the other two guys are, are ahead of him, um, just coming out of the backfield in those roles. But he's going to be asked to do it. And, and make a play, and uh, I know. Well, how much of a recharge mentally was the bye week for you guys? Um, I, you know, I, I really think that being able to get fresh from a health standpoint, uh, we needed Christian Rick to have a week off. We needed Amon Ra to be able to have a week off to, to be a bye bye. You know, I, I, that week couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, right after game five, um, with some nicks and bruises, and, and having played two physical games with Utah, Washington, getting ready to another physical game with Notre Dame, I couldn't imagine a better time. I'm glad it's not after this game, but we, we need it. But for you know, where the season is right now, do these guys get to kind of step back and recalibrate? Well, I, I tell you what, it was great for us as a staff uh, to be able to self-scout ourselves, but, but also for our team to be able to see how much they've got to look forward to. I mean, we've got a conference championship on the line. We get to play a top 10 opponent right here this week um, to try to bring the shillelagh back home. I mean, there's some great opportunities in this seven-grade stretch. We don't have another bye. 
we know for the rest of the season. We're the one team in the Pac-12 that doesn't have two buys. We're the one team in the Pac-12 that's got two Friday night games. You know, so you know we've got a grind coming up, and so that freshness of being able to have a week off right here now couldn't have come up. Is that an unfortunate bit of scheduling the way? Um, and, and like I've said before, it's all based on TV. We're a TV-driven market, and you know you have to be able to put your best product out there. You know what a great opportunity to play Friday, Friday night against Utah. Uh, and when we were the only game on, and to beat a top-10 team, um, that's as good a that's a good a promotion as you can have. So you got to take the good with the, the uncomfortable. And uh, one of the things that that you learn in this game is uh, get comfortable being uncomfortable. And here we go with a seven-game stretch. We've got one more Friday night game at, at Colorado, um, and, and that's part of it. You understand that TV is part of the business, and when you're called upon, you go you go play. I know you delivered many messages about going on the road. What about this? one given that this trip is a little bit longer a little bit bigger yeah you, you know one of the things that's going to happen to us and we, and we talked about it today it is a little bit different trip you know you're talking about a four-hour flight uh, over it's going to be a great atmosphere at night uh, it's going to be a little cool it's going to be our first cold weather it's going to be 47 48 degrees true fall weather which is going to be nice uh, you know so it, it's it's one of those things that you, you talk to your team about about focusing on your job and only your job six seconds at a time and allow allow the noise and the distraction to, to be away and, and look at the opportunity that you have ahead of you. And that opportunity is to, to go compete against a top 10 team and, and gain national notoriety as we prepare for another six game stretch here at Topper. What's the most during the offseason? Getting away from the negativity and the noise outside mm -hmm. of the room, mm -hmm. speculation. But how do you compartmentalize that during the season? How do you watch yourself? yourself? Yeah, I, I, for myself personally, uh, I just focus on the 110 men out there. I've got three children by birth, and 110 I got the honor to adopt. And when you think about them as your children and your sons, you concentrate your full attention on them and not anything outside this wall. Because um, the fact of the matter is they have something truly, truly special to play for down the stretch here. What an awesome story it would be to go win the Pac-12 South, to go be Pac-12 champions, to go play in a Rose Bowl. That opportunity is there, and we got to work our butts off to be able to get there. So you have to have great focus on that and worry about your kids and allowing them to be successful. You don't have time for the outside noise, and neither do they. So if you provide the example of what it's supposed to look like, then they'll do too. And they've done a nice job. Do you What's have it? to talk to them about that, though, like after a loss? Like, no, I hey, hear this. Well, hear that, even, even after, after the Washington loss, I said, hey, guys, understand this. Everybody in the world is going to try to show up. Everybody in the world is going to try to show up, especially on a bye week. But you know what? what Makes a, what gets rid of all the noise is being successful, winning, winning the next game, focusing on the next game. That eliminates a lot of things, and that's the way we've always approached it. Just one week at a time, do our job, try to go win the next. Game. It's what you seen on film from their secondary that's impressed you? Um, you know, I've been extremely impressed with one how physical they are, especially in the run game. You know, they're they're able to play quarters, coverage, cover six, multi, uh, cover three, cover one, um, to be able to play a multitude of coverage, to be able to load the box with that secondary. Um, they show up and they show up fast or like adding an, an extra player to the run game. Um, so, you know, you have to do a great job of winning your, as we've seen, the, the teams that have been successful have been able to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. And when you get those opportunities, whether it's inside a slot or outside as an outside receiver, you got to make the most of it. Um, you got to be able to hurt them. Uh, with, with the deep ball, uh, and uh, so we'll, we'll see how that we'll see how that goes. But I've been extremely impressed with them and with their run support as well as playing man coverage. I think they're as good as they get at it. All right, thanks, thank you.